This is Wickham Sound. Hello, hello. It is 7pm on Tuesday afternoon, which means it's that time for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain. I will be your host for the next hour. We're going to have a guest on in a little bit to chat about arts and music. Uh, We also have some weekly recommendations of some shows, some books and some albums that you might want to check out. We're going to have a little bit of a chat about artsy stuff as well. Uh, My name's Dane Cobain. I do books and things. Uh, I'm going to do a reading from one of my books today because... Mainly because I did one a few shows ago and somebody actually bought my book because of it. So thank you very much, Gainer, for doing that and for showing your support. This week we're going to be chatting to Claire and Matt Moon. They are one half of a band called My Mate Dave. Claire and Matt also put on a lot of local events when there's not a quarantine on and they run Ruby Moon near the train station. I've known them for a little while as well. I mean, they've been involved in Frog Fest. They used to help out at the Arts Centre on Desper Road as well. Good people and uh, they've got some some cool things to say. So we're going to chat to those in a little bit. The other thing I wanted to do was to give you an update on my guitar. So a couple of shows ago I mentioned I bought myself one of those kits where you can assemble your own guitar. And um, obviously it takes a while for things to come in the post and there are a few little upgrades I wanted to make to it. But over the last week or so, I've been putting the finishing touches on that. I think I've been driving my uh, neighbours crazy with the smell of spray paint because I've spray painted it bright yellow. It's called Abbe, which means bee in French because each of my guitars are named after animals in French. And bees are very important. Uh, there's a photo of it on my Instagram as well if you want to check that out. It's instagram.com forward slash Dane Cobain. Anyway... It's complete and it sounds okay. There are still a few tweaks I want to make to it. I'm going to change the pickup um, to like a single coil humbucker. I think I'm using the right words. I'm not really a guitaring man. I actually managed to rip like half the skin off my uh, my hands while I was putting the thing together. I tell you what, screwing the neck of a guitar onto its body, very difficult if you've got rubbish cheap screwdrivers uh, and no electric screwdriver. I was there for about an hour. But yeah, upshot of it is... Obey my guitar is alive and if you need something to do during quarantine I definitely recommend building yourself a guitar because why not speaking of guitars and stuff uh, shout out to sloth in the city they're a sort of two-piece duo who uh, I'm currently watching them live stream kind of while recording this show Uh, obviously I've got them muted at the moment but it's fine because they've got some fantastic dance moves if you're uh, running any live streams of your own musical or otherwise anything artsy Please do get in touch with me here at the studio. I'm pretty sure I've accidentally been giving out the wrong email address. So you can get in touch with me on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. If you've emailed me and I haven't responded, that's probably why. Just drop me another email. You can also find The Art Show on Facebook. Just search for The Art Show Wickham Sound on Facebook. So, as promised, I'm going to do another little reading. So, a couple of weeks ago, I I have a new book out called Netflix and... No, it's not called Netflix and Kill. It was going to be called Netflix and Kill. And then my publishers made me change the title so that we didn't get sued. So, my new book is called The Tower Hill Terror. And it's book two in a series that follows a a detective called James Lightfold. It's kind of like cosy crime, sort of Agatha Christie style, except with a, a modern twist with technology. I've been describing it as like Miss Marple meets Facebook. And uh, they can both be read as standalones, so the one I read from before was actually book two, but as I say, you can read it as a standalone. But I'm going to read you a little excerpt here from Driven, which is the first book in the series, and this is where we meet our main characters as well. So on the lead up to this scene, we've witnessed uh, a young woman get hit in, in a car accident, and the car just sped off, and uh, there didn't seem to be a driver there. And so uh, chapter two, meanwhile... Somewhere on the other side of the city, private investigator James Lightfall was sitting in his office, hunched over his desk with a copy of the Tribune in one hand and a black biro in the other. Lightfall thrived on challenges, even if they were the intellectual challenges of Mr A. Phelps, junior reporter and crossword compiler at the Tribune. There was little else for him to do. He had the kind of mind that rebelled when left to its own devices. He needed something to focus on, something to niggle away at him, something to dwell on in the shower or in the early hours of the morning. That evening, he was dwelling on Eleven Across. It was an anagram, and Lightfold hated anagrams. Clues were fine, and cryptic clues were even better, but anagrams were for people who dealt in words. Lightfold dealt in problems, not words. That was a job for journalists and other hacks. Lightfold hated journalists because he never knew where he stood with them. They took his words and turned them against him. Not that anyone, journalist or not, had talked to Lightfold lately. His last major coverage had been a couple of years ago after the case of the crippled hipster. 
Now in his 40s with a receding hairline and a criminal record, Lightfob was hardly a catch. Couple that with his thin face and his stocky shoulders, his worry lines and his eternal frown, and it was easy to see why the ladies passed him by. His male friends, meanwhile, were mostly on the forcer and the slammer, and either way they didn't have much time for a cheeky pint at the Rose and Crown. Not that Lightfob drank anymore, either. Drink was a demon that he'd lived with for over a decade, but he'd been sober for the last four years and he meant to keep it that way. He turned his attention back to the crossword. Eleven across. Go near fresh fruit. He wrote orange in the little boxes and turned his attention to 19 down. So here we're going to meet a couple of, uh, couple of the, the characters of interest. Tom Townsend was at the Ledbury, the upper class eatery at the Grosvenor House Hotel on prestigious Park Lane, enjoying dinner with a stunner of a woman who was all dark brown eyes and sparkling smile. The starter was so-so, but the main course, grilled kipper with mustard butter, was delicious. He stared at the woman as he wiped his lips and reached for the wine. Her mobile phone rang. She glanced at the screen and then excused herself as she rose from the table to answer it. She was gone for five minutes. Five long, uncomfortable minutes for Tom Townsend, who took out his own phone and started to fiddle with it. When the woman came back, her hands were sweating and her face was flushed, but if her date noticed, he pretended not to. He smiled as he sat back down at the table. Where were we? he asked. The woman smiled back at him and reached across the table to cup his hands in hers. You were telling me how much you want me, she said. And I was telling you how much I want to be in your production. Tom laughed. Yeah? I'm sure we can come to an agreement. Are you sure you're ready? Tom, I was born ready. Just give me a chance and I'll prove it. He paused mid-bite to look at her. She looked the part, but she was untested, a wild card. Please, Tom, she said. I'll do anything. He smirked and put his fork down on the plate. Anything? he asked. Lightfold had finished his crossword, but his brain still craved something to keep it occupied. In years gone by he would have reached for the booze, but the bottle had let him down too often. With no booze and no crossword, he felt like he was out of options. He picked up the paper and tossed it onto his desk. Then he stretched his arms, stood up slowly and began to pace around the room. After ten minutes had passed, he paused and looked around. The office was dingy and shabby looking, but it felt more like a home than his apartment. His eyes wandered lazily over the cheap plastic kettle and his mismatched mugs, past the faulty intercom and the hooks on the back of the door, and then further along to where two potted plants sat sadly on a bookshelf beside a bunch of old textbooks. They slowed to a stop on the only part of the office he was proud of, the sign he'd bought when he first went into business. It read, James Lightfold, Private Detective. He smiled softly, remembering the first time he walked into the place. After the accident and his subsequent imprisonment, it had been hard to find a job. He had a record, a past, and the kind of face that put prospective employers on edge. Even when he managed to land something, it didn't last. Back in the army, he had a reputation for mouthing off to his superiors. Lightfall walked over to the door and grabbed his jacket. He pulled it over his shoulders, turned off the lights and walked out of the office, locking the door behind him. Meanwhile, Miley O'Hara was sat at home with four cans of Relentless and a controller. With her work done for the night, she'd powered down her laptop and kicked back with a console. Her housemate thought she was crazy to spend so much time on it. They didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but they both paid their rent on time and they'd settled into a comfortable routine. Cat cooked dinner more often than not, and Miley made it up to her by offering a sympathetic ear. There was a knock on her door. Miley cursed and, without taking her eyes off the screen, shouted, Come in! The door opened and Cat walked into the room. She perched on the end of Miley's bed, crossed her legs and stared pointedly at her housemate until she paused the game and dropped her controller. Miley turned to look at Cat, who was staring at her with an eyebrow raised. What? she demanded. Kat was actually a Kathleen, at least on her passport, but everyone shortened her name and she was just fine with that. Half a dozen years older than her housemate, Kat was an ambitious woman in her early 30s. She worked for a recruitment company, but she hated her job and wanted to change it, like most of her colleagues. That evening, while Miley was relaxing in her Pikachu pyjamas, Kat was dressed up for a night on the town. She'd straightened her hair and climbed into a pair of skinny jeans, then donned a black blouse and a leather jacket. She was wearing makeup but not too much, just enough to highlight her features and to subtly draw strangers' gazes to her eyes and lips. She smiled at Miley and said, Xbox again? There must be a better way to spend the night. It's better than getting loaded on white wine and listening to rubbish music, Miley replied. Besides, I hate people. They give me a headache. Cat looked at her. Is that why you carry pepper spray in your handbag? She asked. Miley laughed. Hell no, she said. It's an old habit. Better safe than sorry, right? There are some messed up people out there. That's why I do computers. Computers are predictable. You know where you stand. Yeah, Kat said. And you can turn them off when you're done with them. Anyway, listen, I'm going out with the girls. You coming? Miley shook her head. I'm good, she said. But tell him I said hi. Come out tonight, Kat insisted. You can tell him yourself. 
Miley shook her head again, this time with more enthusiasm. Her fringe fell across her face and she brushed it haphazardly away. I can't, she said. I'm busy. Kat sighed theatrically and headed off to her room to finish getting ready. Miley picked up her controller and paused the game. Then she turned the volume up. So yeah, that is a little excerpt from Driven, the first book in the Lightfold series. And now we're going to listen to some music. So we're going to check out U-Shaped Hole by Jordana Blake, who was the first ever guest on the art show. So shout out Jordana. Check her out on Facebook. One. Said a word in hours now you spent on the exchange. The butters of your memories wash out in the rain. Faces in the portals and laughing back at you. Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. Being a foster carer isn't just about providing vulnerable children a safe home. It's about loving, listening and guiding. It's about changing their lives. If there's space in your home and you have the time and patience, then Nexus Fostering wants to hear from you. We're your local fostering agency, rated outstanding by Ofsted, and we're here to support you in supporting them with full training and a competitive allowance. For a career that really makes a difference, visit nexusfostering.co.uk or call 0800 389-0143. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk Sunday evenings on Wickham Sound. If your idea of a fun festival experience is a mashup of metal, grime, blues, folk, pop, with a smattering of electro, hip-hop, Indian grunge, and not forgetting punk, then join me, Paul, for the alternative Wickstape at 11pm on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM every Sunday. I can even guarantee that the weather will be fine. This is Wickham Sound. So broken, I mean a lot to you. 
long ago. Ooh, ooh, that chance was lost long, long ago. That was Bad Luck Man by my mate Dave, and before that we had U Shaped Hole by Jordana Blake. You're listening to The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. My name's Dane Cobain, and we're going to be joined by Matt and Claire Moon, who are one half of my mate Dave. First though, let's get each of the band members to introduce themselves. Hello, my name's Ali Rainey. I fiddle and I sing, and I deal with all the technical wizardry for my mate Dave. Hello, my name is Kel. And I play banjo and sing with my mate Dave. Hi, my name's Matt Moon. I play the flute and I sing in my mate Dave. Are you guys readers? And if so, what books are you both currently reading? Currently, I'm yeah. reading The Ragged Trails of Philanthropists, which I'm finding to be... I'm, I'm shocked at how apt it is for this day and age. It's funny you mention that because... Um, just before we hopped on this call, actually, I was chatting to uh, Clive, who's your cousin, right? That's right, yeah. And and so he's reading it as well. Are you both reading it together, or is that just a, a weird coincidence? No, complete complete coincidence. He popped up on Facebook saying that he was re- he was reading it just literally just after I picked it up. Oh, amazing! Cool. So I bought it some time ago to give it a go, um, and didn't really wade into it much then. But um, yeah, yeah. One one day last week when it was just there was nothing else to do. And the sun was shining and the garden looked lovely. So I went and sat in the garden and, and waded through a fair bit of it. Ah, perfect. And as I say, it's a, it's a, it's a novel, bear in mind, written 100 years ago. It's, it's really apt for today's climate, yeah, shall we say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. I might, I might check that out myself. Um, what, about, what about you, Claire? <clears throat> Me, I'm, I'm, um, I've been ploughing through the, uh, the Philip Pullman books, starting with The Book of Dust. Yeah. It's quite a while ago. And then um, that kind of leads into the trilogy. So I, I've read the trilogy before, but then I read it, read it again because it kind of followed through quite nicely. And I'm just about to launch into the the um, Secret Commonwealth. Oh, cool. It's brilliant. It's been really, really good um, because I was reading the trilogy at the same time that they brought out the BBC um, uh, series. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> which a friend of ours happens to be one of the, uh, is, a, is an extra in it. Oh, cool. <laughs> Funnily enough, but yeah. Um, so it kind of all coincided with that, but it was yeah, it's really nice to to read it. I really enjoyed it. It does make watching the TV series quite a little bit more interesting. You're always looking out for our friends. Look there he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, it's it's funny you should mention that because uh, well, the the original trilogy is is basically that those are the books that I kind of credit with getting me really into reading. And I've read, oh, okay. read those a bunch of times. Um, I've read the book of the uh, La Belle Sauvage. I haven't read the Secret Commonwealth yet. But um, literally no. about about three days ago, I finished watching that BBC series because I'd been I'd been kind of holding it back because you know when you really love something and you want it to be perfect, and I was a bit a bit nervous about it and watched it and yeah, it was great. Um, 
obviously one of the reasons I want to talk to you guys is that you're both in my mate Dave and I'm sure you want to give a shout out to um, the other members as well I wondered if you could give us a bit of a lowdown of you know what my mate Dave is who's in it what roles you play and um, you know the kind of music you make well we kind of tag ourselves as being a quirky folk band um, most of the music most of the songs are written by Kelly okay um, on banjo um, um, but we've all had a we've, we've, we've all pretty much done a, a song now um, uh, we've written one um, but yeah we've been really this year I mean we started off this year quite well we played a, a gig in Surbiton and we did one as part of the Gloucester Folk Trail as well mm-hmm. um, and then we had we had quite a lot of festivals booked this year as well, which is we're a bit sad about because mm. <clears throat> finally got onto festival circuit and, and they've kind of been whipped out from under our feet. One of them still hasn't actually de- declared that it's it's not going ahead, but we're not expecting it to. Yeah. It's green green gathering. We had a slot on the soundscape stage, which is quite a prestigious date, really. Yeah. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, if we if we don't get them this year, we'll be getting them again next year. But yeah, we're we're so. I mean, really, as we as we say on the Facebook page, you know, festivals are the heartbeat of the of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, live is what it's all about. Um, we have a lot of fun together. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been really hard. I think that's the hardest thing about this whole lockdown thing is that is that we just haven't really been able to see each other. Yeah. So, you know. But um, yeah. But we've also we had a bit of great news today. Um, uh, Ali is our tech meister. She she nags us to get this um, all the stuff up on SoundCloud and everything. We've mm. finally done the recordings that we did before we got locked down, and we've been featured on a thirty one um, track album, which is produced by a friend of ours called Gail, who runs the Something Else festivals. All right. And we we were due to be playing Sister Fest in June. <clears throat> um, obviously, that's been pulled now. Um, but the CD is designed to help support musicians who basically rely on gigs and, you know, going to festivals as, as their, for their income. Yeah. Oh, that's a really, really good initiative, yeah. It's a really good thing. So, yeah, I can give you the link for that. And, um, um, it's it's under the hashtag field, field me. Okay. And it's a bit of a long link, but it's something else, something, something else fests dot bandcamp dot com forward slash album forward slash field me. And it's a 31 CD, the CD, 31 track CD. And there's a there's a digital download. I think it's five pounds for the download and a tenner for the CD. But the money goes towards helping. It goes to help musicians that otherwise wouldn't have had an income. And we're really proud to have been part of that. So I mean, one of the things I was going to say as well is that you guys yourself are kind of quite active in putting on shows and whatnot. And um, I know you recently, well, uh, sort of last year, there was the gig you supported, uh, Tankers the Henge. The October gig with Tanker, which was great. I mean, the, the yeah, that support slot was probably one of the best ones we've done, I think. There was something very special about coming on stage and just seeing all those people, because yeah. it, it was a sellout gig. So it's 400 people in the art centre, and all of those people coming forward as we started our, as we opened our set, we'd sing something. Yeah. And it was just, oh, it's just amazing feeling, and I'd love to do that again. Yeah, in comparison with Tankers gig where everyone's up there and dancing yeah. yes. whereas this one was very much seated everyone's sitting down listening to to what Jazz was doing and it, yeah it was great he's coming back actually next year awesome um, yeah. if we're allowed yes, he's coming uh, back uh, he's fingers crossed booked, yeah he's provisionally booked for the Arts Centre for the 9th of January so um yeah, that's that's something to look forward to when all this shenanigans is over. As well as that, you've kind of you were you were involved in Frog Fest, although um, I'm you know I know you're, you've kind of gone your separate ways now. I guess I want to know like from your perspective of um, organising an event. It's like because I've I put on a few events myself, and it's a huge headache. And as you say, you're stressing about whether people are going to arrive, and you know there's yeah. it, it's a lot of work to put into it. And I guess what what makes it worth it, and why why do you keep doing it? Oh. Easy one, easy one. Go on. it's, it's when you're stood down at the front in front of the band. Yeah. Uh, in front of the band, and you turn around and you look at a room full of people enjoying themselves, and it is worth all the anguish yeah. and all the worries and all the sweats. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. When when you when you're surrounded by people enjoying themselves because the band that you put on is on, it's it's a be- one of the best feelings in the world. Nearly as good as, but not quite, but nearly as good as when you reach the end of a gig and people applaud you. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a similar thing. Yeah, I mean that was definitely with Frogfest. You know, you get to the end of Frogfest. One of my favourites ones was when um, was it last year when the Defect, Defectors headlined, and 
we were really worried about the weather. And as the defectors were doing their set, I could see these big black storm clouds gathering around the around the, the high street. And then there was like lightning going through the clouds. And I was just, it's going to rain. And Fogfest had a reputation of never, it didn't rain. Right. It just, it's how it managed not to, a little bit, but not enough to, to you know, to spoil it. And so, yeah, these, these big black clouds were gathering and the, the, the defectors came off stage and the fire show happened and Ali was playing fiddle for the fire, that particular fire show. She was she brought her little practice amp because they hadn't got their music yeah. and she played the fiddle. And meanwhile, all these dark storm clouds were gathering around and then just as she finished and the fire show finished, the, the heavens opened and it just threw it down. Everyone scattered to the pubs. And it was just afterwards, it was, it was only lasting sort of 10 minutes or so, but afterwards the, the high street was empty and it was almost like, you know, that kind of, everyone had breathed out. Yeah. The whole thing happened. It happened. It had been a really great day. It was such a brilliant thing. Everyone had loved the music. It had been a fantastic day. And it was just like, at the end of it, the whole the whole town almost breathed out. You know, it was done. It was just like, whew. Yeah. And it's that, it's that feeling at the end of where you just, until next year, but it's yeah. that feeling at the end of it when, you know, when, and watching it all happening and just unfolding in front of you, all that organisation, all that time and energy that you spend putting into something like that, when you see it unfold in front of you and it's all running perfectly, it's just, it's the best feeling ever. I mean, it's no different to something like throwing a dinner party or even like preparing for a family Christmas or something, you know, you you put all that effort up in front because you know that it's all going to pay off and you're going to have a, a great time when it's sort of finally rolls around, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. That's it exactly. And I mean, we, you know, we came by the fog fest. It's so much. It was so much work for mm. Claire. You know, I, I just hold Claire's Claire's uh, coat strings really. Yeah. Um, apron think. strings. Um, well, while she's sitting sat around the kitchen table um, doing all this work and getting stressed out about it, I'll be sitting at all like taking dogs for a walk yeah. or cooking dinner or yeah. something like Make that. Make a cup so, of coffee. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, maybe cup tea. Fresh cup tea, dear. she's pulling her hair out because she yeah. hasn't got the spec. Tra- the, she hasn't got the stage spec from the one band, and we can't we can't do anything until we've got all the stage spec in. And she's actually going crazy. And I say, why do you do this? Why do you do this every year? Put yourself through this every year, and then we'd be stood in front of the stage as the last band was on. And by that stage, we we knew you know there's nothing else you can do. It's either going to work or it's not yeah. going to work. And it's worked, you know, and, you, and you're still in front of the stage and you've got a few beers inside you and you're dancing and you, you would look at each other and go, yep, that's yeah. why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously it wasn't, I mean, I just, I, I, I say I just, I just did the content for Frogfest really. I mean, for, for a long time I did do quite a lot of publicity as well, but that's kind of, it's all changed. It has all changed now. But yeah, I mean, it was a, there was a team of us, there was a team of yeah. us working together to, to, you know, to bring... Fest to the town, and my main role was was the, was well, actually the best bit to be fair. Finding the bands was probably the most fun part of the, the whole thing. You know, I didn't have to deal with big committees of people, um, safety advisory groups, and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. I got to go to gigs to find um, find amazing musicians, which was you know it's great. I've met some fantastic people because of because of doing Frogfest. Well, oh, some of the bands we bumped into. Oh, amazing. We, we could have put Frogfest on twice a year with the bands. We were yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so hard and, and quite often you, as you probably know the, the choice is made for you you'll go to the band you really want and you'll go can you work this day and they'll go no yeah, you, know, yeah. you try really you try really hard to find another day that they can do you know, that's why some of the bands have ended up at the, well they've ended up at the art centre how important do you think is it for art to um, kind of confront politics and to to sort of ask those questions about the world that we're in Oh okay, yeah, that's one that came up. We, we do a festival called uh, Beautiful Days mm-hmm. every year. So it's one of my favourite festivals. It's an old school style festival. It's run by the Levellers. And it's run oh. by the Levellers. And th- it came up as a point uh, on one of their, their forums. Um, you know, we shouldn't make festivals political. From my point of view, festivals started be- because they were political. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I used, I used to do, I mean, I, I'm not old enough to remember the Windsor. Uh, free festivals, but I used to do Stonehenge, mm-hmm. and Stonehenge was a massive thing. And when they stopped it, that was a massive thing as well. It, it, it came after the miners; um, uh, they, they'd beaten the miners. The next, the next thing that the, uh, the the political elite went after at that time were the were the were the, the peace convoy mm. and the festival scene and the party scene. After that, you know, it, it became so. They, it, it is a it is a political thing. If you want to go out and party with your friends in a field, um, and somebody makes that illegal then it does become a political thing mm-hmm. um, um, one of the festivals that we that we do now we actually 
we work as volunteers in the information tent at Green Gathering. And Green Gathering is a campaigning festival. And so, you know, that's one of my favourite ones. They've got a big campaigning field. And, I mean, it's, it's a very radical, very out there mm. festival. It's one of the ones we were going to be playing at this year, actually, sadly, with, with the band. So, but, yeah. But, I mean, that's what I mean. So festivals are, yeah, music and festivals and art. I think it has to be political, you know. And, and art demands a, a reaction, doesn't it? A response. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's what it's all about. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't challenge you, then then it's not really, it doesn't fit my criteria, yeah. really. It's got to be a challenge. You know, it has to challenge. It has to make you question. Um, yeah, I think that's a really important part of it. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain. I'm chatting to Claire and Matt Moon, who are one half of my mate Dave. And this is Tankers the Henge with Smiling Makes the Day Go Quicker. Broken down country girl Found some metal at the end of her road Road leading nowhere before Now she's got the whole world outside her door This isn't the way it used to be I want my kite back in my hand It's moving too fast for me It's one way only No show tonight Smiling makes the day go quicker Life begins to turn around Upside down comes round again Here's that crazy chaos you call Standing out in the rain See the girl reduced to tears She's had to start all over again This isn't the way it used to be I want my kite back in my hands It's moving too fast for me It's one way only No show tonight Smiling makes the day go quicker Life begins to turn Life begins to turn around Upside down comes round again Here's that crazy chaos you call Smiling makes the day go quicker Life begins to turn around Upside down comes round again Here's that crazy chaos you This is Wickham Sound. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain and I'm here chatting to Claire and Matt Moon who are one half of my mate Dave. We're currently having a chat about whether art is inherently political and I think all three of us pretty much agree that it is. I, I'm with John Cooper Clark on this one. It was, it, it, are you a capitalist or a socialist? And it's, well, I'm a capitalist. I live in, I live in a capitalist society. Mm. If I behave true to my, to, completely true to socialist ideals, 
in a capitalist society, I would be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to, you have to make the profit. You have to make the money. You have to be get the bums on seats if you're a band. You yeah. Know, you, yeah. You, you have to sell the books. Yeah, you have to get people through the door. You have to get people through the door, and these are these those are that's the capitalist thing. Yeah. But it, there is such a thing as caring. You can, be, you can be a caring capitalist. Yeah, you can find a balance between the two. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, I mean, is the idea as well of the? Uh, I think the George R. R. Martin quote is that um, you know a reader lives a thousand lives, and you know the idea being. I'm sure the same with music and with theatre and with dance and everything. Every time you expose yourself to, you know, some new piece of art from somebody else's perspective, then you can kind of see the world through their eyes a little bit. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. Yes. I wondered if you could let me know what you've got planned next. So I know, for example, my mate Dave, I think you're you're um, working on working with Ali on some videos. Am I right? That's right, yeah. So we've got, uh, when we can, when we, we're, we're working on a video that we can do, we can send out while we're still on lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, but also then when we get back together, I think we're going to try and um, do some more stuff for SoundCloud and possibly bring out an, uh, an EP of some sort. Cool. That's been rooted as a possibility. We were supposed to be doing a gig on Friday in our local pub, which is a bit sad, but we can't do it now. But um, hopefully there'll be some more of those sorts of things happening over the the next six months or so we'll be able to do some like, some performances again mm -hmm. um from a moon's point of view um i'm in negotiations with their agent to book bear jams for the halloween party in october um bear jams are on spotify they're definitely worth looking at we had them at the art center a couple of years ago when we did the relaunch mm -hmm. and then as i said we'll have jazz back on the 9th of january as well in the cafe space at the art center um, I've, yeah, there's other things in the pipeline. I did actually have a slot at Beacon Festival mm. um, as a moon's a moon music promotion slot, um, and I had uh, we had four four acts that were booked for that, but unfortunately that's not going ahead now. Yeah. And um, Steph, Steph Willis, yep. and thanks, and um, Persephone, Persephone in the Underworld. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And us, we were we were going to ha have a spot on that as well. So hopefully these things will all come back soon. It's very strange times. Yeah. You know. Well, it's one of the joys of being a promoter, though. If you promote, you can always promote your own band. Eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if somebody doesn't show up, you're like, well. <laughs> so jury service which were due to be playing um, the the squirrel, yep. the mad squirrel in Wickham, just for just as the shutdown happened. Yes, it was just as I remember. Yeah, I was I was going to go to that. <laughs> first time they've ever pulled a gig. First, first time I've ever ever not had to cancel a gig yeah. yeah all the way back to when i was little as well when i was young and i used to do i used to do singing i've never i can't remember ever cancelling a gig yeah absolutely it was a real groundbreaking experience that when you sit around wondering i'm supposed to be doing something yeah yeah and you can't do it <laughs> yeah it's weird uh, it's such a strange experience yeah. that one i mean we lost we've lost a lot because we do festival circuit as well mm. trading we've watched the festival the festivals that we would be at just topple like dominoes yeah. just after the other from from Wood Festival, which is in a, about uh, two weeks' time, um, to Glastonbury, yeah. and then through you know beautiful days and yeah, all of them. So we I don't know. We will have to see what happens. We might Green might still go ahead, but I doubt it. Bunkfest may still go ahead because it's the end of it's the beginning of September. Yeah, we would be working there, but um, and it's a free access festival, so they don't have to worry about ticket sales so much. But even so, it's still you know. I think pretty much the whole of the season is going to be written off. There's been a few things that where people have bought tickets and they've, they've you know, the, the event's been cancelled um, and they've come up. Like, there was one recently that came up, you know, and they were saying, well, you know, we, we'd like to get a refund on the ticket. And it's just like, well, if there's any way that you can possibly not get a refund and you can afford to kind of mm. give that money to the venue, then that would help the venue stay open. It'd help them put something back into the pockets of the musicians that should have been playing. Yeah, for because, sure. Because, you know, they, they rely on it for their income. So, you know, that's, that's the kind of other things. If you can afford not to get the refund, then don't and just give it, you know, because it, it, will, keep, it will keep the industry ticking over, hopefully. Mm. Support the arts. Absolutely. Support the arts. Always support the arts. Well, support the arts centre. Wickham's really support lucky that we've got that space. So yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, every, every, like Claire said earlier on, every musician, every band we've taken into that main space has just walked in and you watch their jaws drop. Yeah. They really want to play there. Yeah. That one that, the one we did the Halloween <clears throat> one where Jazz came in and <laughs> played, opened, played the organ. He opened, the, he opened their set with the organ. He was open, open their entire set by playing the organ 
And, and, and the funniest thing is like being able to, to, be able to be able to get danced and drunk like a loon in front of a band in a church is just like fantastic. <laughs> it is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it so goes against what I was brought up with. Yeah. You know, you were very respectful. You walked in and you bobbed your head and you and you and you took your seat and you sang your songs and you and you said your prayers and then you left. Yeah. So to be able to do to, to dance. And drink beer in a church is yeah. is it's quite an interesting experience. It's like I'm a really rock and roll church. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like Blues Brothers thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get to do flips all the way down the middle. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got there, there's some bands that I've run into that would just be so amazing there. Just yeah. Hardest thing though is getting yeah, people. Space. Hardest thing is getting people. No, the amount of people don't they don't know it's there. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I know, oh. yeah. Even amongst Wickermites, though, as soon as you say Desborough Road, they go, yeah. But in my experience, all the best art always comes out of the uh, out of the out of the rougher areas yeah, of town. Yeah. London, look at the East End of London now, Hackney and stuff like that. It used to be it used to take your life in your hands when you went down when you went down yeah. you went into into the East End. We went up Dalston the other day, Dalston Junction. Yeah, yeah. Now, but I lived up there. It was it was. It really was. You took your life in your hands and you went up there. Now there's like art galleries and we. Yeah. Uh, um, well, uh, we went to we went to a sofa gig in Dalston in a in a Banksy art gallery of all things. That's amazing, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I ended up leaning up against a print. I turned around. There's a print about one of the Banksy prints. I'm leaning against it, watching some band. I can't remember who it was. Was it? It was Tommy Hare. Yeah, Tommy Hare. Absolutely brilliant geezer. The thing is that the the the, the, the gig was in a effectively a basement because yeah. you know, <laughs> real estate is so expensive they and dig Tom out is very place. tall Tom is about <laughs> six foot two and the basement is about six foot two yeah <laughs> and he banged he bashed his guitar he lifted his, lifted his guitar he jumped up whilst he banged his head yeah, he banged his, banged his head on the, on the roof <laughs> of the basement where can people find you as well Okay, so for My Mate Dave, we are um, facebook.com, My Mate Dave Music, and also soundcloud.com, My Mate Dave Music. Um, also, Moon's Music, which is the promotion part of my life, where I put on bands, and mm -hmm. um, is Moon's Music. Um, that's on Facebook as well. Uh, what else have we got? Jury Service. Oh, yeah, Jury Service is at Jury Service on Facebook. Um, I wouldn't say I'm their manager. That would be far, a step too far. I'm more like a cat herder. Um, <laughs> but oh yeah, with the moon, of course. Yeah, we shall hope to open again towards the end of May, if all things go as well. Cool. The middle, end of May, hopefully. Thanks again to Claire and Matt Moon for joining us. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound. This is my mate Dave with Sing Something. Sing something, come along and sing something pretty. Come and sing, sing come, come and sing, sing with me. Face all crumpled with your tears like diamonds. Sing, sing come, come and sing, sing with me. Sing it on the echo and send it out the window. Sing, sing come, come and sing with me. Tie it on a string, watch it floating through the clouds. Sing, come and sing with me. Catch a song in your arms. Ooh, catch a song in your arms. Catch a song. Catch 
Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months, but we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home. Stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. This is Wickham Sound. like you were Roman oh look at my life I'm a lot like you were Roman oh look at my life 24 of so much more live alone in a paradise that makes me think of two That was Sloth in the City with their cover of Old Man by Neil Young. Had to share it. I, they played it during their live stream and I just really enjoy their uh, their take on it. And Neil Young's one of my favourite artists anyway. So 
yeah, we've reached that point of the show where I'm going to share a few little things to keep you guys entertained. So we always have a book of the week, a movie or TV show of the week, and an album of the week. So for this week's TV show, it's going to have to be Into the Night, I think it's called. And uh, it's this show, it reminds me of a, a, a short story, well, a novella, I guess it is, by Stephen King called The Langoliers. And in The Langoliers, basically... Um, kind of the the world is like i can't even explain what happens to it like these people on a plane go through to this like alternative reality of the world that's kind of the past and because it's the past it's being eaten away and so they have to get kind of back on board the plane and fly away from it and that's kind of similar to this story because uh in this one basically what's happening is that every time um like people are getting touched by the sunlight they're dying horribly because of radiation and stuff. So there are these people on board a plane and they're kind of trying to outrun the sun, you know? But meanwhile, there's all kinds of, I don't know, politics going on between the passengers and there are some accusations that, that these soldiers that they've picked up might actually be guilty of horrific war crimes. The uh, original show is in French, so I watched it in French because I've been trying to practice my French. Although it's weird because some of it's in English as well. There's also some bits in Russian. So I, I don't know how they've done that with like, there is a dubbed English version that you can watch as well. But um, yeah, it was good. It was better for the first three episodes than for the last three, to be honest. But if you're struggling for something to watch and you want something a bit different, a bit weird, definitely uh, check that out. It's called, I think it was called Into the Night. For this week's album, I'm going to suggest Highly Evolved by The Vines. It was their uh, debut album from 2002. They're like a Australian rock band. Uh, they have songs like Get Free and Ride, various other ones. Autumn Shade is a good one. Uh, but yeah, Highly Evolved is probably the better of their two albums. It's kind of interesting because it is quite like rocky, quite heavy, but also there's some really neat songwriting in there as well. So um, yeah, definitely check out the Vines in general if you haven't already, and in particular, Highly Evolved. And for this week's book, I guess we're going to keep up with this sort of artsy theme that we've got going on because uh, I'm going to recommend The Armageddon Rag by George R.R. R. Martin. So you might have heard of this guy. Uh, people are kind of still waiting for him to get the name, next Game of Thrones book out, although apparently he's been working on it in, in quarantine. So that's something, I guess. The Armageddon Rag is one of his earlier novels. I've previously read another of his earlier novels called Dying of the Light, which wasn't very good. But The Armageddon Rag was fantastic. It's basically uh, like a fictional novel set following... The kind of the reforming of this band from the 1960s they're called the nazgul and um what their frontman was basically assassinated on stage and then sort of 20 years later the band's getting back together but you know the the forces of evil are getting involved a little bit as well i, I don't want to give too much away but if you're into um you know kind of i guess quite gritty fiction it's almost like um crime mixed with elements of the supernatural and stuff then uh, it's definitely worth giving it a go. It actually reminded me quite a lot of Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. So um, yeah, if you liked Heart Shaped Box, definitely check out the Armageddon Rag. On next week's show, we're going to be joined by musician Nick Atkinson to talk about country music, the Open Mics Late Facebook group, and whatever else springs to mind. My name's been, and it's, indeed it still is, Dane Cobain. This is The Arch on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. You can get in touch with me here on the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. Please do, especially if you're a musician or if you've got any kind of live streamy things, events going on and stuff. Anything cool and artsy, for example, uh, one of my friends is called uh, Pop Band Colour. Well, I say a friend, he's just somebody I know, but he, um, he, he does art using remote control cars and he's been doing a lot of live streams where you can watch him create paintings and stuff. So yeah, it's been helping to pass the time and stuff. You can also find us on Facebook, just search The Art Show Wickham Sound. We'll be back next week at 7 p.m. In the meantime, this is the uh, delightfully named Mingling Open Brackets Company of Stoats Close Brackets by Occasionally David. Awesome. Awesome title. Ensuite, je vous achete de la viande. Quelle espèce de viande Deux. pour le bœuf Deux.
difficult, but it's a rare item. And that's what the Sandman reckons. Convenient to lie To tell an untruth Is better than tingling It depends on the equipment And the mustard you apply And whether Wickham Sound.